Xu Xing is an enigmatic thinker of the Warring States period. He is one of the few representative of the School of Tillers, also known as the Agriculturalists, who promoted an egalitarian communal society based on communal labour on the land. We know precious little about Xu Xing, who he was, where he came from, and the contemporary and previous thinkers from which he drew his philosophy. In fact, Xu Xing's thinking only comes down to us through a possibly fictional encounter between one of his disciples and his contemporary, Mencius. In the debate, the follower puts forward at least two ideas of rulership, that any prospective king should farm alongside his subjects, and that the prices of common goods should be fixed. Mencius counters both of these arguments, by arguing for the division of labour to maximise production, and that fixed pricing will lead to the production of poor quality goods. Despite Mencius' possibly straw man portrayal of Xu Xing's thought in this encounter, it is through this fragment that his name and thought is partially preserved. Other fragments, taken from Taoist and legalist literature, also possibly preserve aspects of the school of Tiller's philosophy. The Book of Shang Yang refers to the Age of Shenong, a mythical ruler in the distant past, who ruled in peace, taught the people to farm, and worked side by side in the fields with his subjects. Although the legalists rejected this form of rulership as obsolete, it potentially preserves something of the school of Tiller's ideal for a king. The Huai Nanzi further explores the ideal society of Shenong. The closest to a law within this school of thought is captured in the idea to quote that if in the prime of life a man does not plough, someone in the world will go hungry because of it, and if in the prime of life a woman does not weave, someone in the world will be cold because of it. The society of the school of tillers had no use for commodities that were without utilitarian value, and as such they did not value gods, such as gold and jade, which derived their worth from their rarity. In this ideal society, there would be no need for the moralist Confucians, or the draconian legalists, as the people would not lust after the rewards, or be moved to selfishness. As such, they desired only what was required. This may seem to follow the ideal of the Taoist ruler, drawing legitimacy from their virtue, but instead the focus is on the practical administrator as key to the state's survival, whose advice was clear, logical, and so compelling that the people pursued it as good and practical advice. One may extrapolate this wisdom into the idea of social dictums. Does one punish a slow-growing vegetable? Do harsh laws and deprivations of nutrients make grains or fruit trees grow faster or better? Instead, clear away the obstacles, and add or subtract what is necessary, protect, nurture, and abide, account for the seasons, so it is with plants, it is with people. With Xu Xing as their only known named representative, the school of tillers was not to be very influential in later Chinese thought, as legalism and Confucianism competed for pride of place in political philosophy, while Taoism became important in the areas of religion and metaphysics. However, the School of Tillers does represent a unique strain of thought from the moralizing scholar-gentlemen of the Confucians, the high idealism of the Moists, the cynicism of the Legalists, and the detachment of the Taoists. The Tillers instead advocate for self-sufficiency and a focus on the utilitarian, a perhaps naive appeal to a return to a more egalitarian and bountiful mythic past.